I'm your host, Sean McKenzie. Thank you for joining me once again on my channel on data engineering. In this episode, we're going back to our Microsoft Access playlist, and I want to talk about how to uh, stop a user from entering a value into a field and check whether they actually want to enter that value or not. Maybe they do, and you can allow that to happen, or maybe they don't, and you can stop them from entering it and stop the execution of that part of it so that they'll enter something different. That's how we use the before update on our Microsoft Access uh, text controls and other kinds of controls, and that's what we're gonna look at today. So without further ado, let's get to our before update in Microsoft Access. Looking to hire more programmers for your project? Make sure to check out the additional links in the description. Okay, so we have this uh, file that we've used before in a few of our demonstrations, and we've got a candy table here, which is a very simple table that has some candies in it with some prices and uh, and you can see we've got 1231, 250 and some other information in there and what we want to do is uh, we're going to go ahead and just create uh, a simple form so we'll go to the create ribbon choose the form wizard and then we'll uh, we'll grab all the fields from that table and uh, we'll select the default here and what I'll do is I'll change the name from candy to candy update and I'll just uh, hit uh, finish and so there we go we've got our um, our candy form uh, there's a columnar form this is sort of the default output from the wizard but as you can see if I scroll through you know there's the prices and uh, the other information and, and if I go past the end of course it starts a new record and you can see uh, this is a pretty standard form. And so what we want to do is we want, we want to look at this field here. And what I want to do is I want to say, you know, if they put in a price more than $100, um, I don't want to just stop them because maybe it's an expensive candy. Uh, we don't want them to make a mistake, but we want the user to check what they're doing. So if I click on the text box and I go to the, the uh, property sheet here, you can see it has candy price selected and uh, if I go to the event tab you can see here is the before update event and if I click on the little ellipsis there it gives me the choose builder pop-up and I can click on the code builder and go OK and that's going to open the visual basic IDE for you and uh, and you can see it has started this event uh, here so we have an event that's getting triggered but this event is different from other ones you might have seen because it has this cancel as integer as integer in there uh, as an argument and uh, it's actually something that we can use during the procedure um, and it helps us to uh, to stop it from executing uh, or the before update uh, stops the update from executing and so uh, what we can do is, uh, it's a very, very simple way of demonstrating this. We can start with a variable that is going to be kind of like a general use variable. So I'm going to call it uh, variant for return value here. And uh, you can say as variant, or you can leave as variant off and the default uh, data type for, uh, for these <clears throat> variables is a variant. So uh, unless otherwise specified, so we can also say uh, dim uh, currency price as currency and uh, that's going to give us pretty much what we need in order to proceed here. And so the first thing that we can do is we'll check that there's an entry in in our uh, text box there and uh, uh, we'll say you know our return value is equal to you know, me uh, candy price. It could be a null um, so that's something that we can check as well. And so we'll set our currency variable uh, equal to NZ or NZ if you're in the United, if you're in the United States, uh, var, retval, and then zero. And uh, that's going to return a zero if, if, if it's null, uh, but otherwise it'll give the currency uh, data type uh, value for what has been put in there. And then we can do an if, <clears throat> an if then statement. We can say if our currency price is greater than 100, then we're going to ask the user, we're going to say, hey, you know, are you sure you wanted to do to do that? So this is different from 
you know, an input mask or a validation check where it simply doesn't let you do something. Um, the before update is a little bit more flexible in the sense that it allows you to uh, to have some flexibility and, and have all different kinds of uh, ways that you can use it. So we'll say, are you sure you want to, you know, price it higher than $100? And uh, we'll put a VB yes, no plus VB question on there so that it'll, it will give us a yes, no uh, message box. And then we can say, you know, if if the return value, so we've changed the value for our return value now, so we've we've asked, we've used it with the message box, so we can say if the return value is no, uh, VB no, then uh, we'll we'll say cancel equals negative one, and that's going to cancel the operation of updating the control, and otherwise we'll say cancel equals zero, which will let it go through, and uh, and that is what allows us to. Um, to use the before update event. And so that's going to um, sort of validate that, you know, validate that entry. The user uh, will have a chance to say yes or no, and then we can sort of see how this goes here. And so we can minimize the code window there, and we, we can go to our candy update form, and we can choose the, uh, the form view. And you can see if I go ahead and look at this $15 here for, you know, chocolate, white chocolate, and I put in 19 and scroll forward to the next record, it saves it. Um, I'll shift uh, tab so that it, it stays on the same record here when I update these. So, but if I put in 101, um, it says, are you sure you want to price it higher than $100? And, you know, if you say no, then it dumps the user right back into the control again, and you can't tab off that without saying yes. Um, uh, so if you say no, it's not going to let you update update that control and, unless you say yes or you change it to a different value. So I could um, say yes, in which case then it will actually update the record uh, or update the control, which in turn will update the record, and it will allow the $101 white chocolate to be put in there, which is very expensive chocolate. Um, but uh, if I change it back to $99, um, you can see it does not um, prompt me uh, to, you know, <clears throat> to say yes. But if I change it back to $121, uh, it will uh, stop me from making that entry until I say, yes, I'm sure I want to do that. And maybe I don't, so I change it back to $99. And you can see then it allows that control to be updated. So this is a very useful way of sort of like nudging users uh, if they're putting in some crazy values that could be, you know, valid, but maybe they're not. And so you can stop them from updating um, where, you know, they might have made a mistake or something like that, and they'll catch that. And so essentially that's what before update does on the control. Um, it, it's definitely, it allows the user to, you know, be, it allows you to validate the data um, and then check for sort of outlier entries that could be valid so that they will still pass validation. But you want to, you could say, you know, are you sure? Or you could check some other value somewhere else in the database to make sure some event happened or whatever. And, you know, it doesn't have to be this particular context, but in this case, we check the price for 100, and we set cancel equal to minus 1, which is uh, part of the uh, before update procedure here. And uh, if, we, if it's OK, we say cancel equals 0, which allows it to uh, proceed through. And uh, that's exactly what we want to see. And that's how you can use before update in Microsoft Access. Looking for coaching? Make sure to check out my Patreon. The link is in the description. Hope you enjoyed today's discussion on how to use before update in Microsoft Access. Have a great day, have a safe day, and I'll catch you next time.